Have a look at the clip that follows this one. And I recorded this this morning when I was working with a guy and his dog um, down in some woodland. And we were working with the dog for chase behaviours and to enhance recall under the distraction of live prey. So we went down into the woods because there are pheasants and we were looking for rabbits and other birds and things that would trigger the dog to allow us to um, develop the recall, to strengthen the recall regardless of the distraction. Now we chose the woods because at the moment there are sheep all over the place up on moorland so we didn't want to go there. Um, we went into the woods, there were no sheep present so the dog's off the lead and we're working. What the clip will show you is the problem with relying on that process alone in order to keep dogs from destroying sheep okay and decimating livelihoods of farmers this is the problem there were no sheep in this wood and have a look have a look what you see and the cattle grid that you see is a cattle grid that leads to a private property and the sheep that you see actually leapt that cattle grid from within the garden of that private property out into the area where we were now the guy's dog looked at the sheep and completely ignored it because the guy's dog had just received recall training off pheasants using an electronic training collar and was strengthening in its own mind the association with the instant movement of prey and its own behaviour and the associated consequence with that. Had that not happened, I can absolutely guarantee you, I can 1000% guarantee you that the dog would have killed the sheep. It would have certainly attacked the sheep, I guarantee it. And yet the guy had done absolutely everything right. He was taking his dog for training, he was having, you know, he's having the, the, the responsible attitude towards, right, I see that I have a problem it needs addressing. Decided, kept the dog on a line in any areas and on a lead in any areas where there were livestock present. We decided that we should go to an area where there were no livestock. We checked about, there were no livestock, so the dog was let off the lead. And this is what you get, this is what occurred. And this is why you've got a problem when you're only talking about management or restraining drive through a lead and post-event prosecution. It doesn't matter if you decapitated the owner for a dog chasing sheep, it doesn't matter if you chop the dog, I've said this before, it doesn't matter if you chop the dog into a thousand pieces. The event has still happened and the dog has got no concept of morality so it's not going to realise that its own behaviours cause those consequences of its own death or the death of its owner or the imprisonment of its owner. Do you know what I mean? That, that's a sort of like a very, very knee-jerk, well, let's punish more then and let's hope that that stops it. And it implies that people are, again, as I've said before in a video, that people are deliberately going out and allowing their dogs to chase livestock. And that isn't entirely the case. This guy, bless him, was there and had the wherewithal to proof his dog against livestock so that when we came across this situation, his dog stood stock still and then came back to him. Do you see what I mean? The ability to do that was acquired through the use of an electronic training aid, a quality electronic training aid, an e-collar, an electronic collar, and it was being given under tuition. How that can be seen by anybody from the farming community, from the dog training community, from animal welfare communities, from a parliamentary, you know, government community, how anybody can view that man as being potentially criminal in his actions to keep that sheep alive and prevent his dog from causing potential devastation is uh, I, I, I cannot I genuinely cannot comprehend your logic and what is also glaringly obvious is that in all the advice that's given and you can look right across the spectrum of people that are giving this advice keep your dog on a lead will increase the penalties you know walk your dog where there's no livestock no one anywhere is saying proof the dog against chasing livestock train your dog not to chase livestock and that really makes you raise an eyebrow because it implies that somebody isn't capable without the use of corrective intervention, without the use of aversive, without the use of electronic training aids or a punishment for the dog for deciding that it wants to kill or attack or chase sheep, that that isn't possible. And if it were, you'd be seeing it, but you're not. And you're not seeing the advice, you're not seeing it being demonstrated by the experts who are telling you how to train your dog. And I'd like to see anybody, any one of those experts, with a very, very highly prey-driven, uh, prey predatory dog, as we were working with this morning, in this situation, with no lead, have that dog choose instead to come back to you.